Don't let the enemy call you what you are not. Some of you have allowed names to be assigned to you. You have allowed funny names to become your name. Do not allow the enemy to call you who you are not. I always give an example of blind Bartimaeus. He was called by his condition. His condition took over his name. And for many years, he was blind. Do not allow brothers, the enemy, to call you who you are not. Because people do not really know who you are. They can try to guess, but they will never know who you really are. Even your family do not know who you really are. Just because they know your real name, they do not know who you really are and what God created you to do. So do not allow a condition to become your name. Just because you are poor, it does not mean poverty has become your name. Just because you are in that condition, it doesn't mean that condition takes on your name. Do not allow it. Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I, I am? Then uh, some of them started saying, you are Elijah. Others, you are John. Others, you are one of the prophets. Listen, all, most of the ones that, that, that were around him did not know who, who they are. In fact, all of them, it's only one person who said, you are the Christ. You are Jesus Christ. It is only one person who was able to say who Jesus was. And Jesus turned to him and said, Our flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father in heaven. It is amazing that you can stay with, with people for so long, but still they do not know who, the, who you are. If you go around and ask them, Who do you say that I am? You will find all sorts of funny statements. So do not allow people to tell you who you are. Now, today's scripture is in the book of uh, Matthew 3, 16 to 17. Matthew 3, 16 to 17. And it reads, As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love, and with him I am well pleased. Now the scripture says that when Jesus was baptized, that as soon as he was baptized, heaven opened up. And a voice came. First of all, it was a dove that was opened. The Spirit of God descended like a dove. Then a voice was heard that this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased with. Jesus received a confirmation. That was a confirmation that he was the son of God. Now, the confirmation was made specifically for the world to know because Jesus knew who he was. He didn't need a confirmation to say. He had, he had already known who he was. But the confirmation was for the world to know that Jesus is the Son of God. And it was for the scriptures to be fulfilled because all the things that Jesus did, it was for the scriptures, for what the prophets had prophesied about to be fulfilled. Some of you have received confirmation from God. You have received direction. Hold on to those confirmation. Do not allow another word to come and dilute the word that God has given you. If God has told you that you are above, do not start thinking that you are beneath. Just because you are in a condition that is below, does not mean that is your, your, your destination. Now, I want to read you another scripture that is very powerful. 
Because this is after Jesus was confirmed. This scripture comes after Jesus had received a confirmation that he was the son of God. He had received a confirmation that he was an, the son. Now this scripture is of course also in the book of Matthew 4, 1, 2, 4. Matthew 4, 1, 2, 4. This is after Jesus had received a confirmation that he was the Son of God. Now it reads, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell the stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Powerful. Powerful. That Je the scripture says that the Spirit led Jesus to be tempted into the wilderness. The Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. And this was after he had fasted 40 days and nights. And he was hungry. Now the scripture says, what well, in 3 says, The tempter came to him and said, if you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Now listen to what the enemy comes and says. Remember, this is after Jesus had uh, been confirmed as the Son of God when he was baptized. He was confirmed by God that this is my Son. Now the devil also comes in again and says, If you are the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. Can you imagine? That where after God has confirmed you, after God has given you a word, after God has uh, given you a miracle, the enemy comes in to tempt you. If you are this, if you are truly God's son, if you are truly uh, anointed, do this. But do not listen to the enemy. No matter what the enemy says, do not pay attention to them. Do what Jesus did. And how did Jesus handle the enemy? Is he replied the enemy with the word of God. He spoke the word of God. Jesus said, answered, said, It is written, Man shall not live on every man shall not live on bread, but on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. In other words, your food should not only be bread. It should not only be what you eat as food. But your food should be the word of God. That's why I encourage people to always read the word of God. Meditate on his word day and night. So when the tempter comes, when the accuser of the brethren comes, you are able to uh, resist him. Scripture says, resist the devil. Resist him and he will flee. Submit to God and resist the devil and he will flee. The first step is you have to submit to God. You have to submit to God's authority. Then resist the devil and he will flee. How would you resist him? Resist him with the word of God. Resist him in prayer. Resist him in worship. Do not just sit around. Do not just speak your own words. But it has to be the word of God. That is how you get victory over the enemy, brothers and sisters. Do not allow the enemy to call you who you are not. If God has said you are blessed, that is it. It doesn't matter what you feel like. It doesn't matter what you are going through. If you are blessed, you are blessed, period. It does not matter. What people say. It doesn't matter what your condition is, looks like. Jesus knew this. He knew he, who he was. He knew his mission. He knew his purpose. Well, I'm running out of time. But I've not run out of good news. 
share this message with somebody else. Let them know of this powerful message. Now until next time, peace.